Hi guys, I'm back. I just remembered briefly what I was going to tell you before. Um, so I came back last night and I unpacked a little bit. I took like the trinkets and souvenirs and t-shirts that I bought for other people out of my luggage and I was uh, full on pizza and I was feeling kind of like, gee, I wonder if I gained weight or how much weight I gained on vacation or broke even or maybe even lost weight. Like, I don't know. I have this weird relationship with my body. So I never know what it's doing. I know when it's dramatically getting bigger or not. But anyway, this morning, because it's Monday, I said, you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet, face reality, and see how much weight a person gains over vacation. Um, I didn't overeat. I ate what I wanted within reason. And I walked a lot. I did walk a lot. And I would get ice cream, but I'd eat like a couple bites of it. And then it would wind up in the... Um, either the little fridge and freezer in my room or when they moved me to a different room, I didn't have a fridge or freezer, so I had like the staff fridge, which they were kind enough to let me use. Um, long story short, I actually lost a pound. I don't know how that's possible. I mean, I had lobster, scallops, fried haddock, onion rings, french fries, ice cream, continental breakfast every morning, which means starch and carbs and butter and jam and coffee with cream and all these wonderful decadent things. Oh my god, there's so much fur on me. Oh god. I got these while I was there. They're made of druzy. What I like about them, even though they're kind of irregular, is that it's druzy on both sides. And usually you don't get that. It's just druzy is a type of quartz, or it's the way they cut the quartz. And it makes it look kind of extra sparkly. Oh god, the ADHD is bad. So I'm just really, really happy with everything else I already said that I lost a little weight on vacation. I didn't think that was possible. I feel like that's like weighing yourself after Thanksgiving. I was happy with how much walking I did. I didn't rent a bike or anything because, I mean, I am still like 258 pounds, but I'm glad that I'm going into the surgery, not where I was last year can't believe how fat I was last year. I really got very depressed about it. But now I can look back on those pictures and say, it's kind of a before, you know, like right now is a before too. But the surgeon said that what he's going to take off my midsection is going to be at least 15 pounds. And from there, I have to just keep going. Because when I got um, my CAT scan this morning, I had a nice friendly conversation with the technician there. And we were talking about the surgery coming up and my clearance for it and all that. And she said, oh, yeah, tummy tuck. My sister got that. And I said, and, you know, how'd she do? And she goes, well, my sister's very lazy and she gained a lot of weight back. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> what a thing to tell a stranger, right? I mean, sounds like she's got a great relationship with her sister. But, <clears throat> excuse me, it is possible to gain weight back just like after weight loss surgery. As a matter of fact... There's a YouTuber I used to watch who got either liposuction or tummy tuck or something, paniculectomy, and also gained back a lot of weight. But because I can't really go there anymore, it went up into like her neck and face. I'm not going to spend $9,000 to have that happen. I'm going to lose that weight and then I'm going to start exercising and watching what I eat even more and make it to my eventual goal of like 200 pounds. Or if I really start getting focused, uh, maybe like 185, 190, which is, I've said this before, but like it's a lot more than most women weigh, but I'm not most women. I am a big, healthy, strong, tall girl, and I look amazing at 200 or under. Can I say that without sounding vain? I don't care if I sound vain. I look amazing at 200 or under. Uh, look at this cool thing I got at a glimpse of Tibet. I should do a whole like haul of all the things I got for myself while I was away and other people. Fun as hell. You only live once, you know. Technically nobody can afford anything, right? I mean, if you want to like live catastrophically and you're not a millionaire. Um, I don't have money, but yet I, I kind of live like I do. I realize it looks that way, but I save and I budget and I move things around a lot and I, you know, I went on vacation and I'm getting a tummy tuck and 
when I go to the dentist next month, I might even get braces. I hate this, and I hate this, and I hate when I smile. It's all crooked. There, I've said it. Um, as far as like a taste test review of this, every time Starbucks comes out with a new flavor, I always ask them, is it sweet? And of course, sweet means one thing to one person and not to another. And I like, I tend to not put sugar ever in a coffee, especially not when I have it hot. But when I saw the word chocolate in an iced cold brew, I said, how many pumps of chocolate do you put in it? She said, it's actually not a sweet drink. We use two pumps, not three or four. Excuse me, gross. So I said, I'll have that. And it's absolutely delicious. It still definitely tastes like coffee, but you can taste the um, the chocolate and then the, the foam has like a mild chocolate flavor. I really like it a lot. And now I'm gonna go in and get my clothing bring it home. I think I might wait till tomorrow on my nails. I was supposed to have dinner with somebody tonight, but he might just come and bring some food over, even though I'm full right now. I wish I, wish I, I don't know, had like the mental bandwidth to like really dig into these memories and tell you guys like every day how wonderful it all was, but I met this Italian guy named Claudio. He's already been texting me. He gave me a kiss when I left. I haven't been kissed in a very long time. I mean, it wasn't like passionate. It wasn't like mouth or lips, I mean, tongue or anything, but, and maybe it's just, you know, the Italian way. I should know this by now. They can be kind of touchy and affectionate and tactile, but that was a fun little flirtation. And then just the staff at the inn was so nice. You know, everyone's from like Jamaica or the Caribbean and uh, just, slow paced environment there chill people just riding around on these teal bicycles with no shoes on and just walking to and from the beach and everyone says hi to everybody on all the different flower strewn porches and there's gardens and the songbirds start at like 4 48 in the morning and my second room had like a balcony so I, I'm, I'm like taking coffee in the morning on this balcony watching the sun come up over the ocean and I'm like is this real life? Am I really here? I'm 56 years old. I've never been on a vacation alone. And if you want to get technical, I've never really been on a vacation because I never had a honeymoon with number two. With number one, the arranged marriage and the cult, we went away for a couple of days on the Cape in February, but that wasn't really a vacation or a honeymoon. We just screwed each other and made a baby and ate a lot of... Uh, mud pies. Remember mud pies? You soften up coffee ice cream and you pour it into like an Oreo shell and then you throw hot fudge over the whole thing. You refreeze it and cut it like a pie. Yeah. We did that and I came home and had, a, had ten, 10 extra pounds on me. Plus I was pregnant. And then with number two, we didn't have a honeymoon and between the two of us we had four little kids so occasionally we'd, we'd take them to like New Hampshire for a night or never more than a night. We would do like day trips, but I don't recall ever going away for more than just a weekend and always with a partner. I never had a proper true vacation with like a friend or certainly not with just myself. So it was such a huge milestone for me to do something that brave and, and bold to get on a plane, which I haven't been on since 1995. And it was exhilarating. I mean, I was nervous you know, when you hear the engine start and then you start that fast, 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 you know, trip down the runway right before like the throttle really kicks in and you start lifting, it's scary, but it's like, I can kind of get now why people are into like roller coasters and sort of like that, that tension that happens before something happens. It's like foreplay. Not that I remember, but, um, my ears didn't pop. I, I was nervous upon taking off out of LaGuardia only because I forgot what it was like to be up that high. How stupid does that sound? You're flying and of course you're flying high. But as the ground got smaller and smaller and smaller and then was pretty much like out of sight, I was like, oh shit. 
but it was a smooth ride, very little turbulence, and it was only like an hour, which is like the perfect amount of time in the air. Took a half a clonopin, had a screaming child on board, and I was like, of course. And then I stayed extra, and it cost a lot to upgrade my ticket. Oh my God, I'm not even going to say how much. It was like five times as much as the first ticket, but... I stayed, I extended my little trip, and it was beautiful. So many good memories. So many good photos, too. So on the way back, I knew what to expect with the plane, and I was really excited about it. I was like, all right, here we go. And we had the lift off, and, and I got the little drop in my stomach, and I had a little bit of ear popping. But taking off from Martha's Vineyard and going into New York City was like a whole different animal, because lifting up over the islands like that and just seeing the boats and the water and the demarcation, you know, the, um, uh, the, the, the perimeter of the islands and how they're actually shaped, like how you see them on a map, obviously, was absolutely thrilling. And it was a cloudy day. So we were like going through the clouds and above the clouds. And I couldn't stop staring out the window and taking pictures. It was wild. It was wonderful. And that trip, I guess because of lack of air traffic or whatever, it only took 45 minutes. Think about it, a 45 minute trip to an island paradise. I mean, I know it's not the tropics. I know it's just Massachusetts, but I don't care. It's, it's, it was still an island paradise to me. And from there to, to, into New York City is 45 minutes. So I, I, I love living in New York because I really am between the city and like all these awesome places, you know, Boston and, and, and Massachusetts and Nantucket and the Vineyard and the Cape and everything. So, um, yeah, and I haven't even really talked about the workshop that much. It was amazing. It was charming. It was quaint. It, it, the workshop itself was held at the facilitator's home in like this big, like refurbished shed almost, like a big she shed where 17 of us just sat around on these beautiful chairs and sofas and on the floor and and shared our essays. It wasn't really poetry. I think I was one of the only poets there, but we had writing prompts and essays that we shared and it was like therapy. Pretty grueling, but it was therapeutic. It lasted from nine to one every day and we broke to break bread. Every day there was homemade bread, Irish butter and homemade jam. So I thought that was going to put five pounds on me. But maybe when you're not eating for stress and maybe when you're just eating in fellowship with people and enjoying yourself, you're eating less than you might think and maybe the body metabolizes it different. I don't know. But I got a lot of great praise and feedback for my writing. I think it's in bad form to repeat back praise. It doesn't sound very humble, but... Let's just say I was very happy with what I heard. Like, really, really, really happy. And when I first got to the island, it took me a couple days to feel like I was, like, worthy of being there. Like, I wasn't there as some kind of a writing imposter or a wannabe. I was, like, really accepted into this group of people with some pretty amazing credentials and backgrounds, let me tell you. Like, really amazing. And so... You know, I really do identify as a writer and a poet. It's not how I make my living yet, but I couldn't stay where I was with my job, even though I love being a caregiver. And even though I'm very kind and patient and compassionate to those in need and very respectful of them, there's things I'm not going to say here, but there were things going on that I just could not represent the company anymore. And I said so, you know, not in a mean way or arrogant way, but I, I stated my case and had a series of last straws. So uh, it's not that I'm jobless. It's just that I'm not going to be working until after my surgery and after I come back from Labor Day, Paradise Part Du, And then I'm going to go into my other job, which... Um, it's going to be great. It might be a little bit more travel. It might be a little bit less hours, but the base pay is better. Do you know that I have been talking for almost 15 minutes? It's like a good old-fashioned longer uh, upload than I usually do. 
So I'm glad I told you about my vacation. Um, I think that I might come back on at some point and read a series of essays I wrote, like diary entries called Is This Heaven? Um, wasn't really poetry this time. Well, I did write two, two poems before I even went, before I even got on the plane. But as far as what I wrote on the beach, it was essays based on things I overheard and people I met and just interesting, cute things that have happened. Things that make me feel like the universe, like I'm in alignment with the universe conspiring for my happiness instead of misery and trauma and my crazy past all the time and grief and loss and anger. My mother's still insane. She probably always will be. And there might never be a resolution to any of that. But I know who I am now, you know, in my center. So, yeah, I, I came back on to say that I, I lost a pound while being away eating all my favorite stuff. I'm getting congested as I sit here. I'm going to go. I'll upload this once I'm home and I have a signal. I'm going to get my laundry and uh, peace out. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for listening. Bye.